Hello and welcome. So this video is going to be a bit different uh, than my recent-ish gaming ones. I'll say recent, I don't feel like I uploaded one in a week or so now. Basically, looking through hard disk, I found my stash of photos I took when I had a work trip to California in late 2018. And during that time, uh, I think it was on my last day, just before going to the airport and flying home, um, I dropped into the computer museum in uh, Mountain View in San Jose and I just thought I'd go over some of those images. Uh, there it will be gaming content later on but um, it, the way they laid out the museum I'm going to show them pretty much as I saw them. So on the screen here so it says Babbage Defense Engine number one. Um, I'm not going to go through intimate details of everything because this will take forever and I haven't done any of that research. Well, it's a computer of sorts. A bit more mechanical than we're used to. You know, certainly before the electric, electronic age, I should say. Let's keep going forwards and um, I might skip stuff. This is going to be a fun editing uh, job for me later. Just seeing what I keep or not keep. Don't know what these things are. Looks a bit like a typewriter but not. So some of our old stuff basically. This one looks like something it could almost have come out of uh, university when I was there. I'm not that old but certainly the wire plug-in things I remember doing some of that. Uh, don't remember so many valves though. Another one more sockets and things you can plug wires in, more dials don't know what it does. No, no idea what it is but it looks impressive doesn't it? Things sticking out everywhere, cylindrical. Looks like it could be a jet engine or something but it's in a computer museum so it isn't and I'm sure it does something smart but I'm not smart enough to tell you what that is. Some more valves. Are those removable caddies, I guess? Um, if I remember correctly, they're supposed to blow after X number of hours. I don't know if it's tens or hundreds or thousands of hours, but they had a finite life. So making it easily removable to swap in good ones is probably not a bad thing. Some exposed circuit boards and things here. More valves. So we're definitely in the valve era, but we're getting towards... Well, I say getting towards, so they must have been available then anyway. Um, leaded components like that, so those are not easily tellable from the this photo resolution, but resistors, capacitors, that sort of thing. We're still probably predating transistor era a bit here. Now, this one did catch my attention. Um, I did send a tweet out at the time, and or was it Facebook? Somewhere on social media anyway. I don't know why, this one gave me Death Star vibes. Me? Is it me, or could you just imagine seeing this somewhere on the bridge of a Death, Death Star? It just seems to have that certain vintage vibe to it that fits the era. You know, Darth Vader's box on the front. They just went to the local electronic store, didn't they, and just bought some random buttons and things. And it's kind of off this era. Ah, yes. This uh, sign on the floor... It sort of triggered all my gaming um, training. So the first rule in any RPG is you do not go where the game wants you to go. You have to explore every other path other than where the game wants you to go just in case you miss something. A rare, an object, um, just something. So yeah, I saw this sign and I thought, okay, I can't go that way then. I just had to walk around the area in every direction I could other than that straight on just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, unfortunately, real life in this particular instance didn't turn out to be a computer game. I didn't find um, materia, magic riches, skill, whatever. But um, that mentality was still there though. I could not go straight on without checking everything first. Now this one with the tape reels, it looks like the sort of thing you would might see in a older TV program or film when you wanted to show somewhere looking high-tech <clears throat> you would have these tape reels going forward and backwards I, I don't know what they actually do well i'm sure it's storage of some sort but um again nice in a retro sort of way this one is when i think it starts getting a bit interesting because this is now into my lifespan my computing lifespan era the first pc i owned had an intel 486 so we're talking off that era i think mine was a 93 is a dx266 this is probably slightly earlier than that. Uh, compared to PCs of today, you know, this looks 
quite different. So what have we got? At the top we have something looking like a battery receptacle for battery backup. That's a 5 pin DIN if I remember correctly or similar for the keyboard. Mouse would have been a serial port which I don't see on this. This might be a server board actually because I think these were the 8 bit ISA slots and the ones with the extended bit on I think took them to 16 bits but I'm not 100% sure on that. This is a T form factor so that's the power connector I think before we moved on to the ATX um, form factor unless I'm getting mixed up again I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, Sims before we moved on to DIMMs. Uh, my first PC had four 1 meg modules to start with and then later on upgraded it with another four to bring it up to 8 meg the power in those days um, this main CPU is here you might see a socket next to it that's for a coprocessor now because this is a DX it should already have the maths coprocessor on it but a cheaper board might have the 486SX which didn't have the maths coprocessor and you could buy a second chip and plug it in next to it it didn't actually both chips were not really active at the same point if you had the coprocessor plugged in it actually duplicated and replaced the main cpu but that's just how it worked at the time and this stuff here is the cache ram so on a modern system now you would have level one level two and level three cache all on the cpu in these days i'm not sure what level that is now but uh, it might be level one or two I'm not sure anymore it's just too long ago but certainly yep yeah, you had to buy them separately and s slot it in if you wanted a higher performance so yeah quite a bit um, has moved on since then don't know what this is this is a silicon wafer of something and I tried to take a photo of it and try to get some of the detail and the colors but well, got some of the colours at least, maybe not so much in detail. No idea what this is, but I did think it... Re it just reminded me of a washing machine, the drum area. I'm sure it's lots of complex and... Especially for its time, you know, um, stuff in there, but... All I could think of was washing machine. That's just the way my brain works. And same again from a slightly different angle. A cray. They were, well, I don't know if they were the first, but certainly when I was growing up, if you mention cray, the first thing you would think of is supercomputer. Uh, so I don't know if this is their first one, an early one or what, but to me it's sort of like it has this mythical status, almost like a monolith in 2001. It's probably absolutely rubbish compared to even your smartphone today, but, you know, for the time... This was cutting edge computing. Now this one, yeah, I hate to admit this, this did bring back memories. Um, the beige computer cases, which was, I can't remember the exact year, but we're probably looking at the 2000s. The beige mini tower boxes were popular then. So these on the rack were, were probably configured to be a cluster. So that's multiple individual computers working as one bigger, more powerful computer. The challenge there, of course, is the connectivity between them to make them behave as one unit. But why this reminded me um, of my younger days is this thing called distributed computing. It wasn't a first project, but it was the first project to go mainstream, SETI at home. I had a computer at the time and I ran SETI at home on it and I thought well if I have one computer doing work on it I can do twice as much work if I have two computers so I had two computers and then three computers and then four computers and I think you see where this is going I don't think I ever reached 16 computers and even if I did they wouldn't be as neat and tidy as this I don't know how many I had at my worst but it was more than more than a handful let's put it that way the beige tower boxes, like I said, would have been maybe 2000 sometime. I think things did change into black at some point, but I don't know what year. And of course, certainly this is nothing like a gaming PC you would buy these days, which would probably be a taller tower, probably with at least a window, if not tempered glass, RGB, everything, lighting. 
you got to have the lighting. If you don't have the lighting, you don't get the frame rate. True fact. Anyway, moving on. Oh, the uh, label there, early Beowulf cluster. So if I remember correctly, that was a... It's a software implementation to clustering, and I think anyone can go and download it. But of course, unless you're a good programmer, you're probably not going to get anything out of it. This one I feel like I should know more about, but I don't. So the deck PDP, I don't know if it's a range or series or this model. Um, I think they did have quite a bit of history in, in them, but unfortunately I'm not that person with that history. This is more like an electronics lab than a what I would think of as a computer here. So we have something resembling an oscilloscope on the top. Oh, it actually says oscilloscope on it. Um, what have we got? A pulse generator, waveform generator. So I don't know what this was used for, but um, yeah, it's a bit different, a bit interesting. You've got to have some Wang. Wang computers, I remember seeing the name when I was growing up. I wonder what happened to them. Although, having said that, when I did hear of them, I think we were long beyond this style of computer. This looks very retro. I don't know, is that 70s? Yes, it is. 73, it says on the sign. I probably wouldn't have noticed them until 80s, if not 90s, and, you know, we're into the rectangular boxes by then. Don't know what this stuff is, but it looks nice. The company that people love to hate these days, Intel. So this is just a small selection of their processors through the years. Although I'm doing a computer museum now, I also did visit the Intel museum on a separate trip, so I'll tack that on at the end. Even if you go to the computer museum, of course, there's no way you're going to escape Intel, just given how deeply um, interwoven they are into computers as we know them today, in the, in the general sense. I can't read all the labels, but certainly we can see a 386 here. So that was the first time I got my hands on a BC. Not the first time I owned one, which is the 486 I mentioned earlier. But the first one I used was a 386. I believe they had a bit of a spat with AMD. Not for the first time, not for the last time. And one of the copyright, I think, problems they had at the time was they couldn't stop AMD calling their processors a 486 as well. So that's when Intel changed to a worded brand for their processors after that. So they chose Pentium and AMD went with Athlon. Uh, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, Pentium 4, and so it goes on. Now, I was talking about going into gaming. Here we are, PlayStation. I remember having a PlayStation 1. I still have it somewhere. Haven't used it in a long time. 94 so 26 years ago I'm dating myself here aren't I I bet some people watching this video weren't even born then this sign was interesting to me because on the bottom there electronic toys 1999 the Sony Ibo I also did get one of those I think um, I started working in 1998 so that was my first the first time I had any real money to spend and these IBOs weren't cheap. I can't remember the exact figure, but it was of the magnitude of a thousand pounds or so. And I bought one. I called her Ricey, Champagne Gold. It was the second, was it second generation? It's not this one on the screen now, I think. It was a later generation, I think, but I'm not 100% sure. I still have her in a storage box. Believe it or not, even robotic pets age. Uh, she has something resembling, I don't know, joint spasms, something like Parkinson's. I think the sensors inside them, which give the feedback control, have got old and dirty and maybe just worn out. So, yeah, it's not good. And a common problem as well was the neck clutch often slipped so they couldn't raise their head. If you helped them raise their head, they would stay up that fine. But if they, like, look down, they couldn't move their head up again. I've seen some DIY fixes for that, but I've not been uh, quite brave enough to do some DIY surgery yet. I wonder if she would still work, actually. The battery's probably a bit old as well by now, given it's 20 years ago. Wow. I feel old. 
the Sinclair Spectrum. ZX Spectrum, I should say. This was my second home computer. I don't know if they have the first one here, so maybe they come back to that later. Uh, but I remember how I got this as my second home computer was a bit of a story. I wasn't very old at the time, but I had some money given to me by relatives. And at Chinese New Year celebrations, I bought some raffle tickets. Everyone bought raffle tickets. Join in the fun, buy some raffle tickets. Didn't expect to win anything. I won the grand prize. A video recorder. Uh, bearing in mind we're talking, what, 80s here. A video recorder was still, you know, something of note, something of value. And I managed to win it. So obviously got it home, plugged it in, you know, replaced the old one that we had already with the new one, used it for a bit. My brother decided he needed a video recorder and uh, we did a deal and we swapped. And I got his Sinclair Spectrum. Uh, the many hours and hours of playing games on that rubber keyboard. It wasn't great. I mean, you could get joystick accessories and I did. But there's no escaping using the keyboard at some point. The old rubber keys. Another IMO. Um, was this the first generation one? In which case, was mine the second or third generation then? Because I don't think mine was the last one that I showed on the picture. And it definitely wasn't this one. I'm going to have to look it up later. I don't know the older generations anymore. So, an assortment of robotic... I, I hesitate to use the word toys, because those bigger ones don't look like toys, really, do they? Pong. Was that the first video game, arguably, or one of the first? So, I've never seen one before, but if this is an original, that's an original, maybe. 1972. This is older than I am. So, yeah, you can work out roughly how old I am now from what I said in this video already. Right, here we go. The 80s-ish era of home computing. And I, I, this made me feel old, you know. Stuff I grew up with is in a museum. Now, the top ones, I believe, are Commodore 64s. I never had one of those. Um, the middle row is where... Uh, the middle left, let's go there first, this one is a BBC Micro, so I mean I still have that actually, it doesn't work anymore, it wasn't kept in great conditions and over the years, yeah, it went bang when I plugged it in, not good. Um, I was debating modifying a PC into it, uh, someone has made a converter that lets you use that keyboard as a modern PC keyboard, it's missing a few keys but um, I thought, you know, would it be interesting to make that a sort of a retro computer? Uh, so that's still a to-do project. I don't know if I'll ever finish it. Uh, but yeah, that was my first introduction to computing of any form, I suppose. I don't remember the exact year. Uh, when was it released? 1981, apparently. I must have been... still in primary school at the time. I remember my dad bringing it home one day and it's like, wow! It's just like the most amazing thing I've ever saw. And although he bought it home, I couldn't actually use it. And he didn't allow anyone to use it because he had... Uh, the shop we bought it, he bought it from, um, he had paid for a session for them to show me how to use it. So I wasn't allowed to use it until that time. So all I did was sit in front of it, looking at the keyboard, looking at all the buttons, where the positions were... And the escape key, I was thinking like, oh, do you need that to use that in games? You push escape to escape from a game or something. You know, the imagination of a... I wasn't old at the time, just ran wild. And then, of course, when I got shown how to do things in the store, you know, went home, I showed the family. When visitors came round, I showed them. And I guess, you know, that was a seed of my interest in computers, even through to this day. Uh, the middle... Computer on the middle row, Sinclair QL, is it? Um, don't know anything about that, other than it's from Sinclair, the same people who made the Spectrum earlier. On the right, that looks like an Atari ST. I did have one of those as well. That I think I also managed to get off my brother somehow. I 
don't think that was the video recorder. I do remember using one of those a lot as well, so obviously games had moved on, so things were better. And there's the Arch Nemesis, the Commodore Amiga. Uh, so, yeah, before the PC versus Mac wars, before the Intel versus AMD wars, we had the Commodore 64 versus Sinclair Spectrum wars, we had the Atari ST versus Commodore Amiga wars. I'm sure there's many other wars as well, and this hasn't even touched the consoles yet. I'll have pictures of that later on. Oh, here's the other half of the display. Um, so you can see the Atari ST. It's similar sort of form factor in those days. It's kind of quite flat. You've got the keyboard in the front. You've got all the electronic stuff in the back. Um, we have another one of these Spectrums there. Don't... Uh, don't know what the Amiga one is, but that looks like one of the newer ones. That wasn't the base model, let's put it that way. I think that's one of the more advanced models. It does have more of a workstation feel to it, you know, echoing the desktop type PCs. Spam. What we call spam is unwanted communications. The tin meat food is still something I have today. In a separate trip, I went to Korea, and South Korea that is, and apparently spam is a very... what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, respected food stuff there apparently during the whichever war it was when the americans apparently took spam over and koreans developed a taste for it as their only source of meat well maybe not the only source but a one of their sources of meat so to this day it's still considered in high regard here we go this is another one i had when i was growing up the coleco vision so this is my first game console that I remember. And look at those controllers. Don't see anything like that anymore. So the round bit on the top is a joystick essentially. You got the buttons on the side and you also had a keypad. And it's not obvious here, but there's a, sl a slit on the side where you can put in a little plastic sheet which goes on over the, uh, the number pad. So you can have like different buttons do different things in whatever game it is. I don't recall many games on it. Donkey Kong, I think, was just a just the the climbing up the ladder ones with the barrels and things. I remember, I think it was called Fury, which was a kind of like a two D vector spaceship shooter. Um, so a bit like Asteroids, but not. And another game I remember was the Smurfs. I don't recall what you did on that. I think it was a sideways scroller, platformer. Well, it's not even a platformer. Because it was a very, shall we say, targeted at a young age. I think it wasn't that complicated and he just jumped through for fences and things. I can't remember exactly. But, yeah, this was the first game console I had. And I really wish I wasn't so destructive in my younger years because I really want to have another go at one now. If you can even find a TV to make it work on or an adapter to make it work, because, yeah, you're not going to get HDMI out on that. In those days, I think everything was RF, maybe composite if you're lucky, but, yeah. I'm going to have to hit eBay later, see if um, any retro samples are still around that don't go for stupid money. More consoles from the early era. So, on the left, the Nintendo 64. Um... Maybe I had a misspent childhood. I did not have any of the Commodore co computers and I did not have any of the Nintendo consoles. I was on the Sega side, which is the Sega Genesis shown there, but that's the US name for it. In the in the UK, it was sold as the Mega Drive. Um, I still have mine somewhere, but I'm not entirely sure where. It probably still works, but I'm going to have to fish it out at some point and on the right was the Atari Jaguar I think from memory that didn't really take off because I think they were a li little bit too little too late you know everyone else was quite established already by that point and things were moving away from consoles somewhat by that time I mean Atari I'm not even sure they exist in a meaningful way anymore uh, the Atari name seems to get sold on from one company to another. They do something with it and then it gets forgotten when it goes nowhere. So it's a sad, you know, loss that Atari, that I knew, 
doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, Sega, at least they're still doing software. You know, they still got Sonic going. Nintendo, of course, they're still going strong, doing their thing. What else have we got here? Some chess computers or similar on the top there. Bottom left, the SNES, is it? I did buy the retro version they relaunched. It's loosely inspired by it with some modern hardware inside it to emulate the old games. Because I did think, like I said, I didn't grow up with Nintendo at all and I thought, am I missing something by not having the Nintendo experience the first time around? So I got the retro console. I think I plugged it in once. I played Mario Kart for about five minutes and I haven't touched it since. Deserves more time than that. Uh, bottom right, the Sega Master System. So this is the one that was one before the Mega Drive. And uh, my best friend at the time had one of these. So I was always over his house and always playing it when I could get my hands on it. Because he had quite a large family. They were Catholic. So I was fighting with... Well, I wasn't fighting with him, but he had two brothers and two sisters, although only one of them was old enough to fight at that point. Um, so, yeah, many an hour sat in front of a TV on the Mega Drive. Mega Drive? Master System. Get my generations right there. Uh, game. One game of note was California Games, and it was like a, a selection of mini-games. Uh, I can't remember all of them, but I think the first one was um, skateboarding on a U thing. I was never into skateboarding, but um, you had to go up and down this U-shaped thing, and the more tricks you do on each end, the more points you get. The second round, I think, was uh, skating. Again, we're talking 80s here. I don't even think rollerblades had, exist, uh, had been invented yet, so it was the roller skates. And you just had to skate along, avoid obstacles, that sort of thing. How simple it was in those days. Uh, I would love to have another go. I don't know if he bought a retro version of this, but I might have to look it up and see if he did. Sega Saturn. I didn't get one of those. I think about that sort of era, I was into PCs or... Yep, yeah, if that was released in 94, I would have already had a PC then. I think that was my main gaming system of the era. Is that a Dreamcast I see? There it is, the Dreamcast. I still have one of these somewhere. I bought it for one game and one game alone, House of the Dead 2. So this was a zombie shooter and you could get a light gun and you could use it to shoot zombies on a screen, just like in the arcades, but at home. Uh, it does lose a little bit in the in that you know, your home TV is nowhere near as big as the arcade machine display was. The other annoyance of the light guns of that era is you can't use them on modern TVs. You have to use a CRT. Um, I have kept one in the garage, but it's not temperature controlled or anything. I, I don't know if it's rusted or destroyed itself over the years now. But someday I might fish it out and see if it still works. That's the TV that is. The Dreamcast is somewhere else in my house. Again, I'll have to dig it out. Um, and why have one gun when you can have two guns? So, yep, I was dual wielding, or however you pronounce it. Um, you know, gun in both hands. You can shoot twice as much then. In my case, of probably less than half the accuracy. Um, I just remembered my arms got really tired by doing that. But that was the game that sold it to me. I think with games consoles, there has to be a game that sells me the console. I don't go like, oh, a new game console's come out, I have to buy it. There has to be a game that makes me go like, I have to have that game, which means I have to have the games console. So I very reluctantly bought a PS4, for example, because I wanted to play Final Fantasy XV. So that was a year or two, or even longer, I don't know, after the PS4 came out. But up to that point, I had no reason to buy one. And then I played less than one chapter of Final Fantasy XV before this other didn't like it anyway. Um, yeah, that was great. Some old uh, PC games here. Uh, Sim City, I remember. I probably still have a copy of it. Um, was that floppy disk era or was that CD era? I can't remember now. But I played the Sim City games through the years. 
sim earth i'm not sure i had the sims i do vaguely remember playing and do being really rubbish at because they kept killing themselves in not very imaginative ways like burning the house down in the kitchen sim isle i don't remember either but certainly the sim genre i do remember don't ask me to name another one in the series right now I, they escape my mind but I think SimCity might have been on the Atari ST and then I bought it again on the PC because I liked it that much. And then of course you got the later versions of the game, SimCity 2000, improved graphics, improved uh, simulation, more more things to simulate. Of course if you look at my channel recently, I've been playing City Skylines, which is I suppose the current state of the art in the city simulator. Doom 2. I remember playing that and I remember being rubbish at it. Now, I think it was Doom 1. It was IDDQD for Invincibility, God Mode, I think it was called. So, yeah, I'm a wuss. Call me a wuss if you want, but I had to turn it on because otherwise I would not last 10 seconds. I still can't play first person shooters to this day. I'm just rubbish at the genre. IDKFA was Weapons, I think, wasn't it? But that's Doom 1. I don't know if the same codes were on Doom 2 or if they changed it or not. It was more of the same. I just remembered the first time I saw a Kaku Demon. I, yeah, I cacked myself on that one. The flaming heads charging at you. Not a good time. I mean, I look at Doom 2016 and is it Doom Eternal, the latest one? And I'm thinking like, I can't play that now. It's just too involved. I mean, even off a cheat code. I would probably still just like, I hate it, no. And just as a very quick comment, Pokemon the movie. I remember going with a friend to see that, and I remember my friend at the time saying, words to the effect, I'm never going to get to choose which movie to see again. We were the only people in the cinema who weren't children or with children. You know, I think I was in the probably the 20s-ish about then. What year, what year was it, does it say? I uh, can't see a year on that, but um, I was definitely working at the time, so it's 98 or after. So it might have been early 2000s or thereabouts. But yeah, I was not allowed to choose which film to see after that. Having said that, we did see some of the later Star Wars films, so yeah. I think film choice didn't get any better. Anyway, Microsoft Windows. Was this the first one? Yep, 1.085. I've never used that. Um, I did see a copy of Windows 2 at some point, but the first version I used was 3.0. And yeah, it's quite a long way from what we recognize as Windows these days. And also in those days, we're not talking internet connected. That's not to say you couldn't go online. You would have to run a modem. You'd probably dial into a BBS of some sort. Even if it's offline, you know, you can still find things to do. I'm, I'm not even sure what I would do now if you give me a PC that was offline. I'd be going like, I can't do anything with it. Can't can't go on the internet. Can't play any internet games. Probably can't even log in onto Steam to play the games unless you're in offline mode already. Everything's so internet connected these days. But when I was growing up, I did think quite a lot. You know, wouldn't it be great if all the computers in the world could be networked so you could like communicate with anyone anywhere? And then the internet... Well, the internet already happened... But the internet became, shall we say, home friendly from about the mid 90s, and that was just such a game changer. Right, back to gaming. This, if I'm not mistaken, is some concept art from World of Warcraft. Um, so there was a mini display area of World of Warcraft. I can't remember if they had some sort of sponsorship with Blizzard or. They certainly had some artwork there. I never got into WoW myself, so I don't recognise what this stuff is although having said that the one on the right there i'm thinking of cartman now that south park episode was the best ever even though i did not play world of warcraft you could translate that to any mmo this is one of the world of warcraft servers or one of the blades server blades so they're one part of a larger server the idea being you make these relatively simple and cheap and you can just cram them into a bigger unit. So we don't see an awful lot. We have eight RAM slots, what looks like dual CPUs, 
what will almost certainly be some very loud, very high RPM server fans. That looks like a storage controller, is it? That's what it reminds me of, I'm not certain on that. I mean, because it's only running server code, I guess they don't really need graphical performance, which would be more, you know, a problem for your client to deal with. So they don't need any fancy graphics, I don't think. So, I mean, it's quite possible this is not fully complete anyway. So if they did have disks in there, they might not want to take it out anyway. Or could it be a network card? I mean, that looks like a some sort of memory expansion module, which I wouldn't expect to see on a network card, although I'm not familiar with enterprise level network cards. And I don't see anything resembling a network socket on it either. Having said that, I don't even see a disk connector either. Another part of a World of Warcraft stand, the merchandising there. More World of Warcraft stuff and a... is that an orc? I don't know my Warcrafty stuff. I can't even tell you if that's an orc or a not orc. My lunch at the restaurant. I can't remember exactly what it was but it had pesto in it and it didn't agree with me. That's all I remember. Yeah, there wasn't a huge amount of choice there. If you're going to visit I would recommend getting food before or after it somewhere else, get something nicer. This is in the gift shop and I remember buying something similar to this, not this exact model but not a million miles different. So this is a electronics kit for younger people. Like I said I had something really similar. So we have a coil there so you can make a radio, LEDs, the battery power, transformer, some transistors and a diode there so you can use that to make a radio. Capacitors, variable capacitor, resistor, variable resistor, switch. Uh, these were sprung loaded clips I seem to remember. And you had these wires, so you just move the spring, put poke the wire in and it'll spring back and hold it in place. And you can use that to connect things up and stuff happens. But it certainly brings back memories. Okay, that's it. Like I said, that was my last stop before going on a plane home and that was my plane home. So now I'm going to go back in time, about a week, to the Intel Museum. So I didn't visit it on the same trip. The Intel Museum. I visited this um, on a different trip than the uh, Computer Museum. But they're in kind of the same area, so you c could and probably should do them the same day. Now this is just outside the, the main Intel building. And it might look familiar because every now and then if you see a picture of an Intel employee doing something, quite often it would be standing in front of his sign. I didn't realise it at the time because I didn't do any research or anything in the building. Um, all I did was, oh there's an Intel computer museum, let's go visit that. Um, looked it up on a map, it's here, drove there. Saw this big Intel site, big Intel buildings, big Intel car park, park in a big Intel car park. Walk over to the front of the building which is here. And... To, to the left of this shot where you can't see it is a, a side entrance which goes to the museum. And inside, as you can imagine, Intel stuff. The 8086, arguably where what we know as an Intel CPU started, although they did stuff earlier than that I'm sure. i7-8086K. Um, I'm actually using that in my PC right now. Yeah, that was just a naming trick they did to celebrate the anniversary of the 8086 original. A early silicon wafer. Um, they have got bigger over the years, so that's one way you can tell if they're modern or not. They did have lots of wafers on display. Oh, here's a bit more of a close-up shot. So I just love the detail like this. I mean, I would really love one day just to get a microscope on one of these or something similar. Maybe you know, I got a macro lens, but not with me at the time. This was all taken on an iPhone. Same again from another perspective. Uh, this was a little gimmick they had there. Um, I can't remember exactly how it worked, but basically there were two sensors and you had to wave your hand over it as quickly as you can. And it would count how long it took you to do it in nanoseconds. And that was used to illustrate, you know, with the clocks into the gigahertz these days, you know, how much a processor can do in that amount of time. That is a silicon ingot. You have to make pure silicon before you make the wafers. And to do that, they have to grow silicon crystal, effectively. That's what that is. And then you slice it into wafers, and then you process the wafers to turn them into chips. Slightly different shaped ingot here. 
another close up of um I don't know what this chip is. If it wasn't so expensive, you know, I would like to buy it, well, get my hands on some of these and just see how good a micrograph I could take off it. More chips, more close ups. I can't get enough of these, can I? And here's an illustration of the progression of wafer sizes and um, technologies. So, like I said, you know, you could gauge in part how old a wafer is by how big it is. As manufacturing techniques improve over the years, they can get bigger and bigger wafers, which means you can do more at once, and that helps bring the cost down. Right, who wants an Intel Inside sticker? Now, they didn't actually let us take these. I think at one point, Intel were one of the most well-known brands because they had um, so much branding on television adverts and elsewhere. You know, the entire inside and the... I can't remember how the sound logo went now, the jingle. Is it do-do-do-do or something like that? I probably murdered it. And if anyone's got perfect pitch, you're going to tell me that's totally the wrong note and everything, but I'm never going to be a singer. The Bunny Men, again, they featured quite heavily in Intel adverts of a period. I can't remember exactly when. It was a kind of a play on the clean room suits they had to wear to make sure there's no dust contaminants because a small speck of dust might be a small speck of dust, but on a chip scale, it's mega destructive. The Intel Inside stickers of the years. Um, once again, I probably had quite a few of these. I couldn't say I have all of them because they have so many of them for so many generations as well. Uh, fortunately, I'm not a CPU collector. Otherwise, yeah, that could get challenging. And that is that, I suppose. This is in a Chinese restaurant somewhere else in the area. That's two places you could visit if you ever found yourself um, with some hours to spare in San Jose, in California. Hope that was of some interest and uh, see you next video.